Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG playthrough. And this time we are playing the campaign Cyclopean Foundations, which is a fan made campaign by The Beard. Uh, the Beard has done a lot of different uh, scenarios, fan made scenarios for Arkham Horror LCG, and this is one of the campaigns uh, he has done. There are a lot of uh, story spoilers throughout so just keep that in mind if you haven't played this or are going to play this at some point know that these playthroughs of this campaign will contain all the uh, story text uh, we encounter throughout the campaign so be warned but uh, we are playing this campaign with Daryl Simmons the survivor investigator from the Scarlet Keys Hero Expansion or the Investigator Expansion. We are playing on standard difficulty and uh, first up uh, let's look at what kind of deck I have for Daryl Simmons. So let's hop over to uh, ArkhamCDB.com. Okay and we are over on ArkhamCDB.com and I built a really solid Investigator deck for Daryl. Uh, this deck should be able to get the clues and have some ways to uh, manage the enemies I encounter throughout this campaign. So first off, Daryl plays a lot with evidence. Um, his ability is uh, to... Let's just open Daryl here. So uh, you begin the game with Daryl's Kodak in play and uh, fast trigger ability during a skill test at your location spend one evidence from an asset you control reduce the difficulty of the test by two elder sign effect play plus one place one evidence on an asset you control and uh, Daryl has a five intellect and uh, three evade and two in both willpower and combat so not a good fighter but a really solid investigator straight out and uh, to play with the evidence, I added two hawk eye folding cameras. So these are really good in Daryl. When you clear a location, you get uh, evidence on this, and you get buffs. And uh, basically, when you get evidence, you can use those to uh, lower the difficulty of test by two. Then we have one old key ring. Uh, we have two research notes. I wasn't sure about this one, but it's a cheap asset that can have uh, evidence placed on it. So I thought to add this also to have cards with evidence on them. Uh, then uh, for damage soak, I have Idol of Xanatos. So this is really good, for example, when you hit your uh, signature weakness uh, ruined film, uh, you are taking a lot of horror if you don't get rid of evidence and if you don't have evidence you are taking a ton of uh, horror so this can soak up horror by discarding cards from your hand to negate the bad effect of the signature weakness there uh, i have played this campaign once so there are some parlays in the in the campaign throughout so fine clothes seems like a good addition uh, Dr. William T. Mailson. Uh, this is uh, a really interesting card with uh, Daryl because you can drop clues and um, cancel the effects and this combos really well with the research notes because when you drop clues you get evidence on the research notes. Then one copy of track shoes. This is just to have some moving um, and boost in my agility to evade enemies basically then uh, quite a lot of events so we have the burning the midnight oil end of the road this is another card which I wanted to try out so this seems like a good one in, uh, at the end of the scenario so you draw one card gain one resource and one get an additional action so this gives you more time to handle situations uh, at the end of the scenario when the last agenda is in play uh, then we have Occult Invocation, this is just to have a way to defeat enemies maybe at some point. Persuasion, again an enemy management card, so you can get rid of enemies in play with this. And there are a lot of humanoids here in this 
campaign so that persuasion could come in handy. Shed a light, another new card from the Scarlet Keys. This with Daryl's ability you can lower a low shroud location to zero. Automatically succeed, get one clue from your location, one from a higher shroud location in play. Then we have winging it. So this seems like a really good card for Daryl. So you can play this, uh, get a clue, then play this again from your discard pile to get a clue, uh, two clues from a location. Then we have some skills. Deduction, of course, to get double clues. Grizzled, another new card, and this is a customizable card uh, because I know what kind of encounter cards there are throughout the campaign. I picked uh, the two traits as being humanoid and hazard, so we get the bonus uh, wild icons onto the card when dealing with encounter cards with the uh, hazard or humanoid traits. Then, uh, Inquiring Mind, because it's a solid. Um, skill card for investigating Look, or doing uh, stuff in locations with clue on, clues on them. Then the basic weakness we drew is the Day of Reckoning, so this shuts down getting uh, Elder Time evidences, but it's not that bad for Daryl, so that's good. And of course we have the Ruined Film, so this gives uh, remove four evidence from a card you control. For each evidence you cannot remove, but in this way take one horror. So that's bad, um, but we have the Idol of Xanatos to deal with that. Then um, let's quickly look at Daryl's Kodak. So Daryl's Kodak comes into play at the start of the scenario, so you don't have to play it. Uh, after an enemy of treachery enters play, exhaust Daryl's Kodak, place one resource from the token pool onto that enemy of treachery as evidence. After you discover any number of clues, move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries at that location or not at any location to Daryl's Kodak, so that is one way to get evidences. But that is the deck, so uh, nothing more to say, just let's hop to the scenario and start playing so we see how this deck functions, so let's get started. Okay, and uh, we are set up here, but... Um, I will read the story test before we start, so without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and we are ready to start basically, but first off, let's read the prologue. So, Saturday, November 12th, 1927, Arkham, Massachusetts. The various archaeological expeditions of Miskatonic University frequently captured the public's imagination for their uh, theories taken to exoit lands and curiosities returned from the same. The ancient trophies were always certain to be exoit and interesting, but were often few and far between. Over the past eight months, however, the university received generous funding from an, an entrepreneur named James Whitecliffe to finance multiple expeditions throughout the globe. Its enterprise returned a success, improving the reputation of everyone involved and stocking the displays of the Miskatonic Museum with press exhibits. So highly anticipated was the most recent expedition to Mykene in Greece that some of the university's more eager professors nearly cancelled their classes for the day that the expedition was due back in Arkham. It was fortunate that they did not, as the expedition failed to appear. While you may have expected a delay due to bad weather or a shipwreck at the worst, that what you didn't expect was the letter addressed to you personally from James Whitecliffe himself. You didn't see an, an, a courier come or go, but the letter was waiting on your doormat first thing the very next morning. Your unique services are urgently required. The reputation of myself at the Mykene expedition are at stake, so this information cannot be made public and cannot involve the police. The expedition returned to Kingsport and sent its cargo upriver to Arkham, but nothing arrived at the university. All play is suspected. Search the Miskatonic River front 
for any evidence of the expedition to cargo identify the thieves if possible. Again, secrecy is paramount. Thank you and good luck, James Whitecliffe. The vague manifest of the mission, uh, missing items and the generous cash advance both included, with the letter only built on your suspicion. Why does Whitecliffe suspect foul play? Why does the, he insist that such a high-profile mission be kept a secret? And why would he come to you specifically? Your experience with investigation usually dips into paranormal territory. If Whitecliffe's expedition uncovered anything of this nature, then who could learn about it quickly enough to hijack it? The questions rack up, but you have no current course of action but to prepare for a busy evening. And we start scenario one. So, scenario one, lost moorings. Your preparations take you a good portion of the day, and by the time you are ready to set out for the Miskatonic riverfront, the grey November skies have begun to trickle rain and the wind has strengthened considerably. At this current rate, this appro approaching storm will reach its full strength during your investigations. Preferable as it would be to wait out the bad weather, its delay only reduces your chances of finding the missing cargo. You step out into the streets of Arkham and pull out your coat a little tighter as you re review the information from Whitecliffe once more. The Mamikine expedition returned directly from Greece and offloaded to the cargo at Kingsport from the ocean liner to a cargo barge. This barge was taken up the Miskatonic River by a towboat named the Mira Louise. The boat, towboat is the same one that delivered the previous expedition's findings and has been operating on the Miskatonic River for over 20 years without incident. That doesn't change the fact, however, that the Mura Louise missed its scheduled arrival in Arkham last night and has not been seen since its departure from Kingsport. The key to unraveling the cargo's disappearance and your own misgivings about Whitecliffe's job for your you both lie with finding their missing towboat. You proceed from your house toward the river, guarding yourself against the elements with a curious feeling growing at the back of your mind. An atmosphere of unease has settled over Arkham this evening, worse than the usual air of superstition. Some of the pa people you pass act like sleepwalkers, barely conscious of their surroundings and talking to themselves in silted bursts. Others stare at you with suspicion and fear, only averting their eyes once you notice them. And perhaps it's your imagination, but are the dark shapes moving in the river? Okay, well, then we have done the setup, so we start here at the waterfront. There are locations in play, the gutted trout, fishing piers, shipping warehouses, Arkham Quay and dry docks. Then uh, we read the agenda. <coughs> so, agenda 1A, a dark and stormy night. By the time you arrive at the riverfront, the storm has grown to a steady drizzle. Rain pelts this, the tin roofs and buffets the uh, already cascading waves, some reaching high enough to wash over the docks. The worst of the storm has yet to make landfall. Uh, the doom threshold hold is four. Then, uh, Act 1, the search for the Mira Louise. Whether the ship has been hidden or sunk, you won't get any concrete answers about the missing cargo until you can confirm the location of Mira Louise. A towboat of its size must still be on the river somewhere, and hopefully some witnesses along the Miskatonic banks can point you in the right direction. Objective, when the investigators have the required number of clues, they must immediately spend them and advance. And we need a, uh, four clues to advance. Okay, so that is everything we can start, and uh, first off, let's draw our opening hand. So we need four clues, so I'm hoping to find some uh, clue-getting tools from my starting hand. We'll see. So we get inquiry mind, all keyring, track shoes, fine clothes, and research mode. Okay, well, I think it will be a straightforward setup turn. I don't think we want to parlay that much at the start, so I'll redraw one card. Okay, Ruined Film. Well, that was a good 
So we get shed alloys that can be actually useful. Okay. Really quickly shuffle my um, Maligon cores back into my deck and we can proceed to play some assets and start uh, looking for clues. Okay. First off, I will play Old Keyring and Track Shoes. That costs me four. Put two keys here. Last action. Uh, where do we want to start investigating? I think I'll try and go into the cathedral. Well, what is a better place to start investigating than a bar? So, we head into the gutted trout. It has two clues and a trout of two, so that's perfect actually. Post, after you reveal the gutted trout, search and cutter deck and discard fight for one copy of Wolf Rat and put it into play at the gutted trout. Two copies instead if there are three or more investigators in the game. Shovel the encounter deck if it is searched. Okay, well. Although it says uh, river. Uh, a wharf rat. It is a humanoid. So it, it is a 3 fight, 2 health, and 3 evade enemy with parlay. So I'm a bit bummed <laughs> that I didn't keep the um, fine clothes because that would have helped. So action parlay. Uh, reveal a Random token from the chaos pack. Before revealing tokens, you may spend two resources to reveal an additional token and ignore one of the, them. If you reveal a, a special token, uh, Wolf Rat readies engages and attacks you. If you reveal any other token, discard Wolf Rat. If you reveal a plus one or an Elder Sign token, also discard, discover a clue at your location. So, unfortunately, this guy engages us immediately, which we didn't want, but. It is what it is, and there are two clues here. So uh, this guy hits us in the enemy face for one damage. Nothing we can do about that. But ec um, actually, let's back up. I have the track shoes, so I will try the test to get out of here. I don't want to get hit immediately, so I'm doing the four against three test with the track shoes to move away from here. Minus four, no dice. So this guy uh, hits us. So we take one damage, and that is that. So we'll go to upkeep. We draw another shed a light and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, well, we add a doom to the agenda. First encounter card of the game in the middle space is. Out of Murky Darkness. Tr uh, tactic Revelation. Put Out of Murky Darkness into play in your threat area. Horse. After you enter a location, each D1 or hybrid enemy already at that location makes an immediate attack against you. And there's an action. Uh, agility 3. If you succeed, discard Out of Murky Darkness. Okay, well. I think I will try to evade. Or should I? Try to parlay this guy. Okay, so we can parlay to get rid of this guy. And I will just try that. So, uh, if we reveal a number symbol or a elder sign or plus one, we get rid of this guy. So I'm trying that. Uh, minus one, we discard the wolf rats. Okay. Second action. I think I'm just investigating five versus two here. I'm actually, I'll play research notes. And then investigate. And I'm not using anything, so five versus two. 
minus 4 B fail, so that was a quick turn. Well, uh, nothing else to do, so we'll go to upkeep, we draw we'll, Dr. William T. Nelson and gain a resource, that's great. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a doom, 2 of 4, encounter card is Whisper from the Water, so Terror Madness. Peril hidden. Revelation secretly add this card into your hand. Pause at the end of the round. If you are not at the waterfront, reveal whispers from the water and either take one horror or move one location towards waterfront. Double action. Discard whispers from the water. Well, mm, I think I will just play the doctor and investigate. And investigating 5 versus 2, 0, we'll grab one clue. Last action, investigating again, 0. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, 5 versus 2, so the token is a skull. Skull is X, X is the current act, so it's a minus 1. So we'll grab this two, uh, clue 2. And um, at the end of the round, okay. So no enemies will go to upkeep. Oh yeah. Yeah, well we could actually we could have put a resource here. And we could have moved that now that we got a clue here. Yeah, I'm I, I haven't played Daryl that much, so I forgot to do that with the Wolfrat and Daryl's Kodak. So we have one uh, evidence on our Kodak now that we discovered a clue and this was in play with an evidence on it. So that's great. So <clears throat> we'll go to upkeep. So we draw a card, burning the midnight oil, gain a resource, and we have to move to the waterfront because of this card here. And that is our turn. No enemies will go. We had beat the upkeep, so let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, 3 of 4, and count card for this round is uh, Driving Rain. Put Driving Rain into play to next to the attend deck. When an investigator would make take a move or an investigator action during his or her turn, that investigator puts one resource. Of course, at the end of the round, discard the copy of Driving Rain, so I'll place one resource on that. <coughs> I'm actually using... Uh, these question marks as evidence, so helps me differentiate them from resources. Okay, first action, we'll head to the fishing piers to find some clues from there. Uh, fishing piers, three shroud, one clue, action, spend one resource, parlay, choose any other reveal location. You may either move and move from that location to fishing piers or vice versa. Well, that doesn't help us. But there's one clue here, which we will try to get. And just to secure this, I will... Well, I need some resources, so I'm doing that to investigate. And I'll commit the inquiry in mind. So, um, we are investigating 8 versus 3. Minus two. We'll grab this clue. We'll get this evidence. This goes to the discord. And last action. We'll go to the shipping warehouses. It is a four shroud location with one clue. Uh, fast action. Pay two resources. You bribe a foreman to give you access to one of the warehouses. Reduce the Round value of shipping warehouses by three for the next investigate action performed at this location. We meet once per round. Okay, well that seems like a good way to get multiple clues next round. So, and uh, we didn't investigate, so we lose one uh, resource from the driving rain. Okay, mm, no enemies. Uh, we'll go to upkeep. We'll draw a card. Inquiring mind. Gain a resource, and we have to move to the waterfront. Okay, well, and there's one clue here. So 
So we need one more clue. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh yeah, and at the end of the round this went away. But this round we add a doom, so the agenda unfortunately already advances. Sheets of rain. A sudden surge in wind. A wind brings the approaching storm in force. Rain plasters you all at once, and the gale nearly pushes you off balance. You brace yourself against the storm and push on, determined not to let the water weather and your investigation early. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of Driving Rain and put it into play. Shuffle the encounter deck if it was searched. Okay, well, I'm just searching for this. Okay. And I'll place one evidence on it with uh, Daryl's Kodak. Okay. Then I'll do it a bit differently. So I'll move to Arkham Quay. It is a two shard location with one clue. As an addition cost to investigate Arkham Quay, you must either spend one additional action or choose and discard a card from your hand. Well, I can just lose an action here. So I'm investigating. I'll lose one resource from this. I'll use. Old key ring, so it does. It is a shroud of zero. Then, as a fast action, I'll play this. So fast play before revealing a chaos token to investigate, and you are performing. And only if the difficulty of this test is currently zero, this test automatically succeeds. You discard one additional clue at this location and one additional clue at any location. So we get both of these clues. And we have to immediately advance. So I'm spending four. Up the river. There's no shortage of forms waiting to be greased, but you manage to weed out the ir irrelevant information from the parts that actually point you in the right direction. Several sailors have saw the Myra Louise sail into Arkham last night, but it is Sailed straight through Arkham further upriver without making any stops. Each investigator loses all of their clues. Uh, from it. Yeah, reveal each Arkham location, then remove all clues from each location. Play. Put the set aside main deck, wheelhouse, and engine room locations into play. Remove the unfriendly ports and counter sets from the game. Shuffle the encounter deck if it was searched. This set is indicated by the following icon. So I'll do that uh, in the between turns. Uh, Marine Salvage. You trek up the banks of the river west out of town. It doesn't take long before you spot the ship on a small offshoot of the river, anchored in the darkness of nearby trees. While silent, the ship is not uninhabited and you can spot a uh, Lone figure moving slowly and deliberately about the main deck. Objective, if an investigator enters the main deck, advance. Oh yeah, and we uh, investigated so we get this evidence. So we reveal a uh, dry dock. So it, it has a force round one clue, but there are no clues now on it. While you have no cards in your hand uh, or no resources in your Source pool, you get plus two skill value while investigating the dry docks, but we are not heading there. Uh, then we put these locations to play. I'll do that in between turns. And uh, yeah, no enemies will go to upkeep. We draw a card, winging it, winging it, and we gain a resource, and this goes away. So I'll do the mid game setup uh, between turns, and we'll head to the next round. So let's hop back. Over to the next round. Okay, well, uh, we removed this set from the encounter deck, and I think I forgot to read the Act 2 A. Uh, marine Salvage. You trek up the banks of the river west out of town. It doesn't take long before you spot the ship and a small offshoot of the river occurred in the darkness of the nearby trees. 
Uh, while silent, the ship is not uninhabited, and you can spot a lone digger moving slowly and deliberately about the main deck. Objective: if enemies together enters the main deck, advance. So, mm, yeah, and uh, the doom threshold is now five. So uh, we'll go to the middle space. We add one doom to the deck, and also we had to move to the waterfront because of this card in our hand, which I forgot to do at the end of the last round. Okay, so we get cold trail. Revelation, just willpower 3. If you fail, return one of your clues to your location and take one horror. Well, we don't have any clues, but we probably will have to take the horror. I'm testing uh, 2 versus 3. It is a skull, and it is. Uh, uh, we are at Act 2, so it is a minus 2. So we fail. We take one horror. Nothing we can do about that. And. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think I will just get rid of this one for two actions and try to get rid of Out of Murky Darkness this round. I am testing uh, 4 versus 3. So, um, I doubt I'm needing that, so I'm committing this, so 5 versus 3 sounds better. Minus one, we didn't need to co commit this, but at least we got rid of this one. So that was our whole turn. Uh, of course, I'm uh, forgetting I can use the uh, evidence here on skill test, so I have to remember that past those nasty treacheries. So we'll go to upkeep, we draw deduction, the enemy source. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, and yeah, I forgot to talk what locations we have here. So uh, the main deck comes into play and it is engaged with the waterfront or uh, connected. And then we have the wheelhouse and the engine room. So when we get to the main deck, we advance. So I'm just trying to set up before we head there. So we add a doom and counter card for this round is. Battering waves. Hazard. There's agility 3. If you fail, take 1 damage and move to the connecting location with the lowest shroud value. If there is a difference of 2 or more between the shroud values of the two locations, also lose 1 action. Uh, well, this has lower, so we'll just move here. Or up there. Okay, well, we are testing 4 versus 2, not committing anything. Minus 2. Take 1 damage and move. I'll move here. Okay. But the difference in Shroud is not 2 or more, so we don't lose an action. Okay, well, uh, nothing to play, so I think I will just run to the main deck, so we'll move, we'll do the truck choose action, trying to get an extra move, if we don't, it's not a big deal, minus one, we pass, so we'll get a free move to main deck, four shroud, zero clues, victory one, uh, non-euclidean, so now I We'll talk what the non-Euclidean means. So, non-Euclidean, place one clue on main deck from the token bank. Pass trigger ability, if there are one or more clues on main deck, read evidence one on the scenario interlude, evidence on board in the main campaign guide. And it is a victory point location. Okay. So, uh, I'll read what the non-Euclidean means. So, we have... Uh, Additional rules in this campaign, which are Notice and Non-Euclidean. Notice means... Well, I'll, I'll read the, that later. So, Non-Euclidean. Non-Euclidean is a new ability that appears on some locations. When an investigator would move from a location, that investigator... I'll actually show that. Okay. So, that investigator uh, must resolve all Non-Euclidean abilities on that location. A location is Non-Euclidean for the purposes of other cards effects if it has at least one non-Euclidean ability printed on or otherwise. Then we have the notice. This doesn't apply yet, but 
um, we will be getting notice uh, throughout this campaign. So some re resolutions and interludes in the Cyclopedia Foundation's campaign will instruct players to add or remove notice to or from the campaign log. This is done by marking on the meter of the second page of the campaign log. Uh, later in the campaign, some scenarios may be changed or altered depending on how much notice the investigators have. Notice is shared among all of the investigators and it is not tied to any specific investigator. Notice has no game effect except when explicitly referenced by the campaign guide or by a card effect. Okay, so that is notice. Okay, well. Uh, well, there is nothing to do here, so if we move out, move out of this location, the non-Euclidean abilities place one clue on main deck from the token bank. So, we will first go into the... Hmm, I think I'll go to the wheelhouse first. Free shroud, one clue, and there is a victory one. Investigators at wheelhouse get minus one to all skills during the mythos phase. The fast triggered ability spent, three clues per investigator as a group. Read evidence 2 under scenario interlude evidence on board in the campaign guide. So there's some stuff happening now. Because we moved out, this is a non Euclidean and gets one clue. And uh, if there are one or more clues per investigator on main deck, read evidence 1 under the scenario interlude evidence on board in the campaign guide. So we read that now. Okay, so we have evidence 1. As you walk the main deck and venture into the, its cabins, the ship's architect doesn't seem to come together correctly. Corners that you expected to join stay apart despite all appearances, and you stumble over seemingly flat boards. On closer inspection at various spots on the deck, you find small fragments of a soapy green stone embedded in the wood. Your vision wobbles slightly as you gaze at the stones, focusing the dizzy feeling from earlier. You're not sure if these stones were placed here on purpose or merely left behind by whoever attacked the ship. But what is certain is that the fragments are a sign of arcane tampering. Remember that you inspected the ship. Okay. Then... Uh, we need clues. Okay, so well... Might as well investigate here. So we are investigating 5 versus 3. And uh, I'm using one evidence to make it a 5 versus 1 test. I'll actually play winging it to go 5 versus 0. Elder sign, we'll get one evidence back, which is great, and we get a plus one, and we'll get this clue. <coughs> and uh, that is our turn, no enemies, we'll go to upkeep, we draw ruined film. Remove four evidence from cards you control, for each co uh, evidence you cannot remove, in this way take one horror. So, there goes our evidence, our film is ruined, but, and we have to take one horror. Well, that sucks, but it is what it is. At least we had some evidence for that. And we gain a resource, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a Doom, 3 of 5, Encounter Cordis. Grotesque hallucinations, peril hidden. Secretly add this card into your hand. Post. If you end your turn at a location with a shroud value of 3 or higher, reveal grotesque hallucination and discard a card from your hand at random. Action. Choose a non-weakness card in your hand, in your discard pile, and remove it from the game. Discard grotesque hallucinations. Okay, well, that's okay, I think. Hmm... 
Well, 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 well. Um, I think. We'll move. Then we will uh, do the fractious action. Four versus three to try to move again. Zero. And uh, this is used this round. And then on Euclidean as another blue here. Then we go to the engine room. It is a three shroud, two clues location. Uh, spend one clues as a group, put the set aside Thomas Rubicki into play at the engine room. Action. If there are no clues on engine room, read evidence 3 under the scenario interlude, evidence on board in the campaign guide. Okay. And we get uh, Thomas Rubicki, misfortunate stalker. Uh, it is an asset uh, bystander action. If there are no enemies on Thomas Rubicki's location, parlay test uh, intellect or willpower three. If you succeed, place one clue on Thomas Rubicki from the token by force. If there are one clues on token uh, Rubicki per player, flip him over and resolve the text on his other side. Okay. So, a lot to do here. I will use my okay let's see okay I'll just hmm let's see let's see I would like to play the winging it but I think I will save that for later maybe no, I'll I'll use it here. Okay. So we discover an additional clue if we succeed because we are playing this from our discard. We are testing five versus two minus three, so we pass, and this shuffles back into our deck. Okay, and we grab both of these clues here. Then uh, we can fast action. Oh yeah, we had to spend one clue to get this guy into play. We did that. Now we get to just read uh, the this evidence tree. Okay. Evidence 3. What at first seemed like a fight between two parties now looks to be three instead. Corpses in the particular outfits of sailors are grouped together in one corner, while bodies in tailored suits and French coats lie mixed with, the, with those of horrible fish-like creatures. Judging from the broken tummy guns and quality of their suits, these men were members of our guns in famous Obanian gang. What thought? brought the, them into conflict with these mutants, it's an anyone's guess, however. Uh, were they both laying claim of the same prize, or were they working together and came to a dispute? Remember that you examine the corpses. Okay. And uh, uh, if there are no enemies, there are none. We can parlay and do the willpower parlay. So we are parlaying 5 versus 3, not committing anything. I should have done this beforehand, but it is what it is. So 5 versus 3 is still good. And unfortunately, we don't have any evidence to back this up. Okay, minus 2, we pass. So we read the back side of this guy. So what the stoker saw. After a few tense minutes of reassurance, you manage to claim the stoke, calm the stoker, but you find some difficulty in speaking with him. His thick accent and broken grammar shows that he hasn't been in America for very long. The man collapses to his seat, 
and uh, rubs his forehead uh, with ter uh, tearful relief. You are. Save me from them. Men with guns, they say to stand at corner. Not let us talk. I hear sound of them take cargo. They, the stoker licks his dry lips as the, he tries to focus his memories. Boat stops and we wait long time. Then air turn, waves, strength, sight and sound. Then monsters come. White men with guns, I hide in a hole. But friends, not fast. He looks to, to the bodies of his former crewmates and makes the sigh of the cross. You confront the man and assure him of his safety while making a me mental note of what happened to the ship's cargo. Add this card to the victory display and remember that you talk to the survivor. Oh yeah, what are we supposed to do? I think I haven't... Okay, we ha should have advanced. Oh, damn. Yeah, this, this sucks. We have messed up quite a lot here. So dark deeds at work. You move cautiously up the gangplank of the Myra Louise deck and peer over the railings on the opposite side. A towering man hoists a body in an expensive suit and hurls it over the side of the ship. You crane your head up to get a good look at the body, but it is just enough for the man to spot you and turn back towards the ship. Who the hell are you? He blows, advancing towards with powerful strides. Be spawn the set aside Bill Bledsoe at the main deck. So this guy should have been in play for a mo moment here. Okay, well, it happens. I have only played this once, so I didn't remember and I missed the advance here. Okay, let's see. Uh, so our goal is to <coughs> death on the Miskatronic. You found the Mira Louise and a fresh set of trouble to go with it. The presence of the brutish man and the well-dressed corpse already compounds the mystery, but there's sure to be even more evidence somewhere on the ship. Whatever you chose to pursue, you'll have to work quickly while you can still endure the constant attacks, terrible weather and strange influence you feel on the back of your brain. Objective, if at least three of the following are true, the objective the investigators may choose to advance. The investigator subdued the attacker, inspected the ship, found the cargo manifest, examined the corpses, talked to a survivor. So we have done talk to the survivor, examined the corpses and inspected the ship. But um, I will try to get at least one more because we messed up the mid-game setup here a bit. So uh, we pa basically run past this guy with the track shoes. And um, let's say we evaded that guy. It's an easy evade with four versus two. So this round, this guy hunts. I'll put this guy here, mark it down. So uh, we'll take two uh, damage, damage for him moving to us and hitting us last round. So we'll try to make it correct. So now it hunts here. And that is the round and we'll ready we draw day of reckoning so we have to fish for the elder sign of course when I try to find it I can't find it so we get the day of reckoning and game and resource so that sucks but it is what it is then if you end your turn at location with the Shroud of Value of 3 or higher, we have to reveal this and discard one random card from our hand. We lose the Inquiring Mind, and we still have the Deduction. Well, damn. Mm. Okay, well, nothing we can do about that now. Uh, it is what it is, but let's try to play this correctly to the end of the round, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom. Encounter card for this round is Deep One Raider. Four fight, three health, one evade, humanoid monster, deep one. Hunter, prey, lowest agility, forced after ten. Deep One Raider successfully evaded. Move Deep One Raider to a connecting location and quit possibly. <clears throat> or empty if possible, there's a typo on the card. 
Okay, well, uh, it spawns on us. We'll place uh, evidence on it. Oh yeah, this guy also spawned, so it has an evidence. Okay, well, we will evade. Four versus one, minus three, we evade. But this guy moves over here. So I'll place it over here and moves to a connecting location. Hmm. I think I'll get rid of this <coughs> card. I'll choose a non-weakness card in my discard and I'll choose Shed Alight and that goes out of play. Get rid of this last action. Hmm. I think I will wait for this guy to come and hit me. Next round, go there and try to get the clues. I'll move so that uh, that doesn't work. There's actually no way to get those clues out of there if I am at the location. So I'm thinking of re actually resigning here. No. Okay. That is a... Oh, damn. We need three clues. Hmm. Well, this sucks. I'm actually not sure what to do here. Uh... If I get those clues and move, it has another clue on it. So we don't get that. Well, we could move up there. Get these clues, move there, and next round try to get the last thing and resign. I think I try that. I'll move here. So this. Engages us and enemy actions. This guy hits us for one damage and then four. I think uh, our good doc, well, good doctor doesn't go away yet. I still have one health left. Okay. There's no point in this because next round we have to evade, evade, investigate. And we are nearly dead, so um, I'm just resigning at this point because we have done. Uh, sub, uh, they inspected the ship, found the cargo man, no, examined the corpses and talked to the uh, survivor. So we have done three things, so I think we bail out here. Too bad I misplayed that, but I tried to correct it as well as I could, but it happens don't mind but yeah let's go continue to the resolution so we will advance only just begun your search of the mira louise has pro provided some very strange insights but there's no sign of the actual cargo you were hired to find you decide to retreat with the information you've gathered to figure out where to try next resolution 3 resolution 3 Satisfied with your examination of the Vera Luis, you return to land before the night can throw any other surprises at you. From there, you pay a visit to Velma's diner to refresh yourself and go over the information you gathered. What you found on the ship provided you as many mysteries as answers, and you still don't feel much closer to recovering the expedition's stolen findings. You do have an idea of where to search next, however. Thanks to the Brutish man you first clasped on with, the uh, with on the ship, uh, when you approached, you saw him 
dumping a body in an expensive suit over the side of the ship. Only a gangster would be that well dressed on the scene of the crime, and only the Obanion gang would be so bold as to hijack a publicly celebrated expedition. If anyone knows where the missing cargo is, it's those gangsters. Your course is clear. In your campaign log, record that the investigators explored the Mira Louise. If the investigators found all five pieces of evidence, each investigator gains one bonus experience. Mark one notice in your campaign log. Proceed to resolution four. So we didn't get the bonus experience. Uh, we get one notice in our campaign log. Um, resolution four. As you read your de decision to pursue the gangsters, you glen glance out of the window of the diner by chance. Uh, through the constant rain, you spot a dark figure in a trench coat just at the edge of your vision. The glow of a cigarette partially lights its face. Looking straight ahead and focused intently on you, the moment you rise from your seat, the figure turns and strides away. How long have you been followed and by whom? The Albanians? Someone else? Something else. You take another sip of warm coffee to counter the fresh chill that rattles down your back. In your camp alone, record that the investigators have been observed. Add one cultist token to the chaos pack for the remainder of the campaign. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory axe value of each card in the victory display. If any investigator earns three or more experience during this scenario, mark one notice in your camp alone. If any investigator earns six or more experience during this scenario, mark one additional notice in your camp alone. So uh, we uh, got three experience, so we got two notice uh, let's see so if any investigator and three or more experience mark one notice okay so we got uh, two notice total and three experience total and then we proceed to scenario two going twice so well uh, that was a bit of a fumble of my, on my part with the act card. I forgot to read the card and spawn this guy, or advance and spawn this guy, so it messed up a bit, but I think we recovered. So basically we did one evade and that's that. So yeah, we got three experience, only two notice. I, uh, uh, spoiler alert, the less notice you get, the better. So it won't make it more difficult for you if you have less experience uh, or notice but the more experience you get the more notice you usually get so it is a fine line to dance uh, at in this campaign but yeah i will upgrade my deck and we will see in the next scenario next time which will be going twice so hope you guys all like this playthrough thanks for watching and until next time